You know, everyone said I was crazy when I said that I was going to take AMD Strict Halo and take it to a low power state. Everyone was like, hey, you know, it's actually a 45 to 55 watt chip. Y yes, I know. I'm aware. I've dealt with a lot of these things. However, because I've dealt with so many of these things, I know that I could take this lower. In fact, pretty much still the only person ha has shown this going lower. So let's get straight into how low can this actually go? Now, for you, if you have a PC gaming handheld, if you have a handheld in general, you're going to want something that has decent battery life. So how low can we take it? If we're playing 2D games that are just not really engaging the GPU, we can actually go all the way down to about 7 watt. And when we compare that directly with the Asus RG Ally X, we can see that we're only really using 1 watt difference between Asus Z13 Flow versus the Asus RG Ally X. 1 watt isn't a big difference, especially if Asus were using Asus's 80 watt hour battery. Now, you would think that having this giganto screen would consume more power, but that's not actually the case. The biggest power consumption part of this is the backlight on an LCD. And typically all these are edge lit and they're going to be SDR. So you're really only going to be using a watt to two watt, and that's going to be pretty much the same regardless of size. It, it seems counterintuitive, but after looking at a lot of these things, that's generally what the case is. So if you didn't know that, that's kind of just, you know, more info for you. But we can clearly see that we're not using much power and it runs just fine when we're really running this at a very low wattage. So how is that possible? On Strix Halo, the 395 variant, what happens is on the two CCXs, eight cores basically just get disabled. They get power gated, no power goes to them. So then it's just eight CPUs that are now just sipping power. So it's a really well-designed chip and AMD does a lot. The other part of this is the bandwidth side of it. It is a 256 bit wide memory controller. Now, I've told people this back in when I told, talked about the Xbox handheld, saying that when we're in a handheld state, we just have to run the memory controller at a lower frequency. What happens is when we run the memory at a lower frequency, the memory controller shares a clock domain. So all of that lowers power as well. And this is things I talked about, I don't know, three years ago. Everything I said three years ago is true today. There are so many times that what I'm saying, because I, I just know, I know what I'm talking about, and I'm here to tell you that Strix Halo can be on a handheld, and it's not a technical problem, it's just a cost problem. We're going to talk about that in a, var a few various different ways, but ultimately what it comes down to is, if we were to look at the battery on the Asus RG Ally X and try to figure out what the battery life would be, you get around 9 hours of battery life. I think 9 hours is a considerable amount of time, and I think a lot of people would be okay with it. And even if you were saying, okay, well, what happens when we need to engage the GPU? I think for a lot of people, 15 watt is a general okay area that we're going to, you know, they're, they're okay with targeting. So if we take a look at 15 watt and we compare both of these, in this case, we're going to go with Returnal running at 720p. However, it is a sub-resolution of that. It's being upscaled to 720p using XESS balance mode and all low settings. Now, this is typically the type of power that we're going to have to be putting into the platform to be able to actually get playable frame rates. Now, what's interesting here is even though both of these are set to 15 watt TDP, we can see that Strix Halo is actually using around three watts more in total system power. Now, that basically equates to around 10 to 12% more power that is totally being used on the platform. But when you compare how much the performance uplift is, we're looking at around a 32 to 40% performance uplift. So, even inside of the same TDP, and even when we consider total system power being only about 12% different, we still get a pretty ginormous increase in performance as well. So at even at 15 watt, we can still extract really good gains out of Strix Halo, even though from a memory bandwidth perspective, we're not actually really getting the full 256 bit wide memory here. When we take a look at your 15 watt, we're really getting around like 170 gigabytes a second. So that maxes out at around 220 in, in terms of like real recorded results that we're getting in bandwidth. So knowing that, AMD could actually do a bit better here if they were to manage memory clocks inside of different power scopes. What they're actually doing is just averaging out what the clock could be and using that to kind of find a, an automatic power to do. It's, it's kind of a lazy way that AMD is doing it, but that's fine, right? They, they don't really expect people like me to just be forcing this into a state that it, it shouldn't be going to. In fact, the lowest state that ASUS puts us in in the silent mode is around 20 watt, 24 watt. And that is the minimum power needed to actually have full bandwidth on the platform. 
So when we actually boost up power to like 25 watt, again, we can see even greater gains on Strix Halo. And 25 watt is probably the extreme of what anyone would want to run a PC gaming handheld at. And even from a total system power point of view, we're not really using all that much more on Strix Halo. So again, technically, there's no real big problem here. And in fact, if you were to look at this uh, with an 80 watt hour battery, that's like on the Asus RGLIX, we're gonna have like two and a half hours of battery. So that's still okay battery life, even though we're making a pretty large demands out of the system here. What is interesting about Strix Halo and how it highlights bandwidth number one, going to 256, going to 256 bit wide memory is not an actual power concern at all. What actually is happening is that it gives us the ability to come closest to having a Switch-like experience for a PC gaming handheld experience, right? So if we were to think about going the, all the way at the low end, going down to 6 watt, uh, 7 watt total system power for running 2D games, going to 24 watt, 25 watt total system power, 15 watt TDP for generalized 720p gameplay when in a handheld state. You could also bump that up a little bit more if you wanted to get a little bit better performance. But you can also take it to the next level, and this is where the it'll leave the Asus RG Ally X in the dust when we go to like 1080p games. So if we take a look at Cyberpunk, in Cyberpunk, in this particular example, I'm actually running Cyberpunk at 1080p with Steam Deck preset, but with no upscaling. So this is native 1080p that you're seeing here. This is fairly demanding. So at 15 watt, you can see that the Asus RG Ally X is basically running at 18 FPS. This is not playable at all. We need to use upscaling techniques at the very least to try to get better performance here or push more power into it. We're getting around 24 FPS on the Strix Halo part. So we're getting considerably better performance, but still not something that's very playable. So in this space, you still would want to be at 720p, right? You don't want to be going to 1080p here, or you're going to have to upscale to there to actually get better frame rate. But that's just to kind of show the handheld state. What happens if you wanted to have that Switch-like experience in a PC gaming handheld where you dock it and push more power into it? Now, on the Asus RG Ally X, you can actually push more power into it. You can do this for a lot of things that people don't really know, but you can just push more power into it. So you can see the Asus RG Ally X, if I push 40 watts into it, we're now at 35 FPS in this particular segment, but we're getting almost double the FPS at the same TDP. Total system power is not all that much different, but we're still getting almost 2x the performance gains. And this really highlights how memory bandwidth bound memory bandwidth bound we are. It really doesn't have much to do with the GPU side of things. We, we just have way too much GPU. And this even includes the Asus RG Ally X. When you consider how wide that GPU is and the frequency, the clocks that it runs at, the 128 bit wide memory that's on there is really starving the system. And you can see it getting completely kneecapped, even though we're pushing 40 watt into it. When we push 40 watt into a platform that has 256 bit wide memory, we're getting double the, the, the performance. And really it's just being able to feed that GPU that is taking us to the next level. So ultimately, again, what this video was supposed to be, I have done a full on in-depth video on Strix Halo a month or so ago. And that's an hour long and it goes very in depth. There's a ton of information there. This video is really just a highlight. It'd be like a brief segment into how it's actually technically possible to put Strix Halo on there and change people's mindset into what's actually possible. Because a lot of times people just kind of see what Apple is doing. They're like, oh, we need ARM to go into mobile when ARM is not inherently more efficient than, uh, efficient than x86 x86 can be efficient. In fact, Strix Halo is a crazy monster and AMD did a fantastic job for what it is. For the next generation parts, when we take a look at that, where Strix Halo, the next generation of Strix Halo is likely to be the only chipset that we're going to be able to have that is going to have uh, AMD's latest generation GPUs on there, their UDNA parts. For regular laptop parts and the parts that are probably going to be coming in the PC gaming handouts, we're going to get RDNA 3.5 again. So that's going to be kind of crummy. Maybe we'll have cash to kind of help things out, but ultimately, I don't think it's going to be a great scenario. And Strix Point itself, not Strix Halo, Strix Point itself is already pretty expensive. Which gets me to the cost par part of this. If we take a look at what Framework has, right? Framework has a bare bones case with 32 gigs of RAM and the um, AMD Max 385 variant. This is an eight CPU part with 32 CUs on the GPU. 
that is $1,100 for a bare metal part. There's no SSD, there's no heatsink. But if you were to take what Framework did there, if Framework were to make a handheld, right, and to put game controls on there, a screen, storage, a uh, heatsink, maybe we're going to be around $1,300-ish, somewhere around there, plus or minus, right? At $1,300 at $1,300 for Strix Halo, it really doesn't make much sense, especially because the performance gain that we get out of it doesn't make sense compared to the Asus RGLIX that's already currently available. However, for the next generation part, if we can get the lower end version of Strix Halo with UDNA, that might make sense. And there might be a world where there is enthusiast class PC gaming handles that leverage those. So, I, you know, I don't know where the future is going to go. I know cost is a big concern for a lot of things. Ultimately, we really need AMD to give us more bandwidth. Thank you very much to my YouTube channel members, as well as my Patreon members. Your support really means the world to me, guys. I hope this video is informative. As always, guys, thank you for your time. Thanks for watching.